Good evening, everyone. In the previous session of management of financial services, I explained about the SEBI guidelines and regulations related to right issues and private placement. In today's session, I'm going to explain the guidelines regarding IPO. So first of all, I'm going to explain about the general guidelines, then about central listing authority, and then I'm going to explain the SEBI guidelines regarding the IPO. Then I'm going to explain the regulations to prospectus, means what are the rules and regulations are created for prospectus. Okay, so let's begin the session. So like I said, first of all, I'm going to explain the general guidelines for the new issue. Here it says that whenever a new company uh, is supposed to issue or supposed to issue new securities in the market for the very first time in the primary market, these issues must be made at par, which means the price of these issues or price of these securities must be at par. It cannot be at discount or it cannot be at premium. So premium means more than par and discount means less than par. So it clearly states that for a new issue company, they have only one issue of fixing the price of the security. That is, they have to fix the price at par. Okay. The, but for uh, the existing, existing organization, existing companies, uh, there, is, there are different kinds of rules. So the, all the existing companies should justify their issue price as per Malegam Committee's recommendations. So Malegam Committee was formed to recommend certain, uh, certain aspects through which the companies can justify their price fixation for the new issue. Because uh, whenever a company is working for a, is, is working and operating for a very long time, they have various aspects. They may be doing very good. Uh, they are. They have. They may be having higher profits, goodwill. The market price of the existing shares may be very high. So they need to justify if they fix a higher price. That is, if they issue securities at premium, or even if they issue securities at par or discount, they can justify their issue price with the following elements. Okay. So the issue price should be justified by the earning per share for the last three years. So first of all, the company needs to calculate the earning per share for the last three years. And they are supposed to calculate uh, by dividing the net profit by the uh, weighted average outstanding shares. So with this formula, they can easily calculate the earning per shares for the last three years. And then they have to compare the pre-issue price to the earning ratio. They have to find out the earning ratio of the company and then in order to justify their price uh, fixed, whatever price they have fixed for the new issue, they need to compare the pre-issue price with the earning ratio and then they have to compare the issue price with the earning of the entire industry. So if they are uh, fixing a higher price, it must be reflected in their earning per share that if they have higher earning per share, if their earning ratio is very high, they can issue the sorry they can fix the price of the security at premium but if they have lower earning ratio if the industry has a lower earning sorry earning ratio and the earning per share to since last three years is not very good then they can uh, issue at par or at discount so in order to justify their issue price they have to compare their pre-issue price with the earning ratio of the company as well as earnings of the industry. They can also uh, justify through by showing their net asset value. So if a company has a higher net asset value, the investors may be or even investors may prefer to even pay a higher price for shares of such companies which have higher net asset value. So they can uh, charge a premium, they can issue uh, the securities at premium if they have net asset, higher net asset value. So depending upon the net asset value, the company can fix the price and later they can use the net asset value to justify the price they have fixed for the new securities. And the next one is the minimum return on increased net worth to maintain pre-issue EPS. So whatever net worth is going to be increased after the issue, there must, they must have calculated some kind of minimum return that if their net worth is supposed to get increased with uh, this um, number of amount, 
then what would be the return if the net worth has increased so they have to disclose that they have to justify by the justify their issue price by giving this point that our minimum return is going to be increased with this percentage then they can issue a higher price or if it is not going to increase that much they can issue or sorry they can uh, fix a lower price okay but uh, here this portion uh, actually is all about the involvement of sebi in fixation of price of new issue but generally sebi do not play any role in price fixation in fact the issuer with the consultation uh, much with means they con they consult with the merchant bankers whenever they are supposed to fix the price of the new issue so sebi does not play any role it is just between the company the issuing company or the issuers and the merchant bankers they they uh, get the they consult with the merchant bankers and then decide or fix the price for the new issue okay so first of all in the first type uh, the company and the lead manager fix the price which is called the fixed price so the lead manager that is the merchant banker uh, they uh, consult with each other they discuss with each other various aspects to profitability uh, means what kind of response they are expecting from the uh, investors so with those things they decide a particular price and that price will be fixed that price will be given to the new issue and there is also a second method that they are supposed to fix a price band or a floor price means uh, they are going to give a price band and they will leave it to the market forces that whether it is going to increase or decrease it will be entirely dependent upon the market forces the situation of the market so they are going to give a price band uh, within which the price will be fixed by the market forces and this process is called book building price okay so this is basically the general guidelines regarding the new issue the next topic which i am going to explain the central listing authority so uh, the central listing authority has been set up and its functions have been detailed means of uh, the functions of the central listing authority is mentioned in detail under the regulation 8 of sebi okay so which is stated central listing authority regulations 2003 so sebi has created certain regulations and they have also mentioned the detailed function of central listing authority okay so what are the main functions of cla the first one is processing applications for letter president to listing for applicants means they have to uh, create a proper process of applications means they have to properly guide the applicants who are supposed to apply for the job so whatever what is the basic processing of the applicants or uh, sorry applications how to fill up the form and all those details must be mentioned so that is the first function of cl they will look upon whether all the details to the uh, applicants have been provided by the company properly or not the next one is making recommendations to the sebi on issue pertaining to protection of the interest of the investors in security they will make necessary uh, su suggestions or recommendations to the sebi regarding the protection of the interest of the investors that whether a company has protected the rights and interest of the investors or not where if they are involved in any kind of fraudulent activity or any other element which does not protect the interest of the investor so they are going to analyze the situation and then going to make recommendations to the sebi regarding different kinds of rules and regulations which will protect the interest of the investors regarding the securities means regarding their investment in the security means uh, the investors cannot be cheated they cannot be given wrong information they must be given detailed information mentioned by the sebi and if any company does not do anything if there must be any kind of changes in the previous rules and regulations those recommendations are made by cla the next one is uh, making uh, suggestions for the development of regulations of security market including listing of investors in security so they also make suggestions which will help in uh, changing some regulations regarding the security market making some development to regarding security market so that uh, each and every investors can 
they get access to the new issue they can easily invest in such kind of securities so such kind of uh, regulations or such kind of recommendation uh, sorry recommendations can be given by central listing authority okay so uh, they can make necessary uh, suggestions uh, and they can also uh, make necessary suggestions regarding listing of investors in security means uh, how easy it is for investors in order to get a security to send an application to get allotted so these things they can make necessary suggestions regarding the development of the securities market and also they can suggest uh, regarding any kind of change in any existing rules and regulations regarding to the securities market okay and the last one is undertaking any other function as as may be delegated to it by the sebi so if sebi uh, has decided to uh, give some new functions or extra functions to the cla they can provide and whatever functions whatever task is given by the sebi the cla has to follow it okay they have to uh, execute all those functions given by sebi okay the next i am going to explain the grade uh, the grading of ipo see ipo means uh, the initial public offering it must be graded and this is mandatory this is compulsory in nature if a ipo is not graded it cannot be issued to the public so the first and the most important element in the regulations or in the guidelines that grading of ipo it is mandatory for each and every company okay so sebi has made grading of all ipos mandatory which draft document are filed with it after april 2007 so after april 2007 they have mentioned they have uh, mentioned it in a proper document they have given regulations and everything that it is mandatory for every ipo to be graded so uh, it shall be mandatory to obtain grading from at least one credit rating agency so there are many credit rating agencies which uh, rate the securities now they rate the securities they do not rate the company that is the important point that you all need to understand a company may having different kinds of security and some of the securities may be may be having high rating some of the securities may be having low rating but that is only about that particular security only not about the entire company so the grading is done only regarding the security not regarding the entire organization so a single company having different kinds of securities may have different kinds of ratings also okay and the last one is the issues the, sorry the issues uh, shall be required to disclose all the grades obtained by it in the prospectus abridged prospectus issue advertisement and all the other places where the issuer is advertising for the ipo so it says that uh, each and every type of grade given to the security it needs to be disclosed means the investors must be aware about the grading of the securities because as investors when we are investing in any type of security we need to have detailed information regarding the security whether it is uh, whether it is related to the dates of the issue or whether it is related to the price and grading is also very important if i am investing in any kind of security i need to know the rating and grading of such security so that i can expect what kind of return the security is going to provide me okay and if uh, it also prevents the interest of the investors so it says that uh, we need, need to disclose all the grades obtained by it in the prospectus abridged prospectus prospectus is generally includes all the detail information about the company and about the issue now abridged prospectus it is a memorandum in form to a it is mentioned in the companies act which also disclose some of the silent features of the prospectus so in both the prospectus they have to mention the grading means what kind of grades grades they have obtained for their securities and whatever kind of advertisement uh, regarding the issue they are given they are giving in different places whether it is through internet or media or tv whatever kind of investment uh, sorry advertisement they are doing they must disclose the grading of the securities in those advertisement 
so it simply means that whatever information they are providing to the investors in whatever form they want they must disclose the grades that they have obtained from different rating agencies regarding the issue of the security okay and uh, here it says that uh, the sebi has been issuing guidelines uh, sorry uh, this is about the grading uh, about grading of uh, the ipo that why it is mandatory and how it is to be uh, executed properly the next topic which i am going to explain the sebi guidelines regarding ipo so these are the guidelines mentioned by the sebi and each and every company who wants to uh, issue or who wants to go for ipo they have to follow these rules and regulations these guidelines or else sebi can take necessary action against them so these guidelines are modified from time to time and the basic purpose of these guidelines are to protect the interest of the investors and to promote a healthy capital market in the country so our country uh, is a developing country and most of the companies may depend upon the ipo in order to raise finance so in order to gain the trust of the investors investors they must trust this uh, form of investment and for that reason protection of their interest is extremely necessary so these guidelines are specifically created so that the, the sebi and the companies can gain the trust of the uh, investors they may not feel that they are being cheated by the company or some company are not some companies are not disclosing important facts about the company so these things cannot happen under the under the regulations of the sebi so they are completely dedicated to protect the rights the sorry the interest of the investors so that a healthy capital market can be created in the company so these are the basic guidelines which each and every company has to follow if they want to go for ipo okay so the first one is all allotment have to be made within 30 days of the closure of the public issue and 42 days in case of right issues so if a company is going for ipo the allotment of shares or allotment of the security must be made within 30 days of the closure of the public issue so issue will be made for certain specific number of days and after the closure of the public issue after from that day to 30 days they have to make allotment to the uh, investors who have applied for the security that is in case of ipo and in case of right issue the days are increased to 42 days so that is the first guideline related to ipo the second one is the set offered to the general public has to be at least 25% of total issue size for listing on a stock exchange so in order to list on a stock exchange general public issue must be uh, at least 25% of the total issue size so if they are issuing around uh, like 10 crores so they need to issue 2.5 crores to the uh, sorry uh, to sorry 2.5 crores to the general public that is the thing they have to do it and this they can uh, offer to any other party or some sponsors or something but 25% of the total issue must be made to the general public if they want to list themselves in the stock exchange if they want to list the securities in the stock exchange and for listing of security or listing an ipo on nsc national stock exchange they have to fulfill the following conditions so the first one is the paid up capital must be or should be 20 crores so the the paid up capital of the entire company must be 20 crores uh, if it is less than 20 crores they cannot list in nsc the second one is the issuing company should have a track record of profitability means the issuing company must be capable or should have earned profit since many years if they do not have a proper track record of profitability they won't be allowed to list their security in nsc the next one is the project should be appraised by a financial institution or a commercial bank or a merchant banker so uh, the project for which they are uh, raising additional funds 
so that project needs to be properly appraised by financial institution any kind of financial institution or it can be appraised by a commercial bank or merchant banker and if these projects for which they are they want additional funds and these projects are not issue sorry not appraised by any of these parties then they won't be eligible to be listed on nsa okay and other guidelines are uh, after the issue so, sorry after the listing of security the second one is in case an issue exceeds more than 100 crores the issuer is allowed to place the whole issue through big book building form means if the entire issue is more than 100 crores then it is uh, an opportunity is given to the uh, issuer that they can go for the entire issue in the form of book building so what is book building so book building basically means the involvement of underwriter and they are going to decide the issue price for the IPO. So if only if the issue is more than 100 crores, then only they will be allowed to issue the securities through book building firm that is the by involving the underwriter for issuing the IPO price. The next one is a minimum of 50% of the net offer to the public has to be reserved for the investors applying for less than 1,000 shares. So there may be investors who are applying for 5,000, 10,000 shares, as many shares as they want. So they are saying that whatever is the total size of the offer, 50% of the total must be reserved for those applicants which are apply, who are applying for less than 1,000 shares so that the shares can be properly distributed and all the shares cannot be hold or cannot be held by few investors only. So for that purpose, 50% of the net offer must be reserved for general public who are applying for less than 1000 shares and other 50% can be uh, issued to those uh, investors who have applied for more than 1000 shares. Okay. The next one is all listing formalities for a public issue have to be completed within 70 days from the date of closure of the subscription list. Means there are many formalities related to the public issue and these formalities must be completed within 70 days. Okay. So when the, the means when the subscription list is closed, the date of closure of subscription list from that day to 70 day 70 days they have to fulfill all the formalities for the public issue okay and the next one is there should be at least five investors for every rupees one lakh of equity offered means uh, for one lakh equity or one equity worth rupees one lakh it must be distributed among at least five investors means so that uh, less investors cannot hold too many shares so every share or the total share worth rupees one lakh must be uh, allotted to at least five investors or more than five investors that is one of the basic guidelines next one is the pan and gir number must be compulsory quoted in the application where the monetary value of the investor investment is fifty thousand or above so if an investor wants to invest more than 50,000 or wants to uh, miss whatever they have allotted for share, if the, to if the total application is for uh, more than 50,000, if they have applied for shares worth rupees more than 50,000, then they have to men mention PAN or GIR number, uh, which is, it has to be uh, completely disclosed by the investors or else they won't be allotted any share so it is compulsory for those investors who are applying for shares for more than 50000 they need to mention their pan and gir number okay the next one is the subscription list for the public shall be kept open at least 3 working days or more than 10 working days okay so for the number of days uh, for which the subscription will be open where the investors interested investors can apply for the shares it must be open for at least three days or not or less than 10 working days means it needs to be working days holidays are not counted 
so it must be open for at least three days if not three days they can uh, be kept open for more than three days but not more than 10 working days okay so these are the basic guidelines provided by sebi for the ipo and for the companies who wish to go for ipo okay so the next uh, topic which i am going to explain is the regulations for prospectus these are the regulations for prospectus means every company issues a prospectus whenever they are going for ipo and they need to disclose certain important information in the prospectus so here i am going to explain what are the detailed information which they need to disclose in the prospectus so the following information are to be stated in the prospectus and the first one is the names address and contact details of the corporal office the main office of the company the issuer company compliance officer merchant banker co-manager registrar to the issue banker so these are the things which are needed to be disclosed in the prospectus the agency which have rated their uh, security or any kind of uh, instruments uh, ad address and everything needs to be disclosed so it simply means that all the parties which are involved in the issue whether they are registrar or merchant banker managers credit rating agencies all kinds of names all their names and address addresses are needed to be specified uh, it needs to be disclosed in the prospectus and these are the important things which are specified by in the sebi regulations so uh, in, uh, uh, addresses and names of important persons that each and every like merchant banker co managers all the names address and contact details of the corporal office needs to be disclosed so that this is the first point the prospectus shall contain all these information the next one is uh, the dates relating to opening and closing of issue means on what date the issue will be open and on what date the issue will be closed these two dates must be clearly specified the second one is a declaration shall be made by the board or the committee authorized by the board now this declaration is about the refund of allotment so it needs to be done within 15 days of allotment if there is some kind of over subscription they need to be refunded and if they are not refunding it within that 15 or specific stipulated time then they are also supposed to pay interest on those non-refunded amounts so the a declaration is made by the board or the committee regarding the refund of the amount or the money uh, to the investors and if they do not refund within the 15 days time period they have to pay interest on that also okay and the next one is a statement is given by the board regarding the collection of the money application money that they have created a separate bank account for collection of this application money so who, whichever company decides to go for an ipo first of all they have to open a separate uh, bank account in any scheduled bank so that whatever money collected through the application forms it needs to be deposited in a separate bank account of the company specifically open for this purpose okay the next one is the details of all the utilized and unutilized monies so here they have to disclose uh, the money utilized and the money un kept unutilized from the previous issue so if the company has a previous IPO, they will be having the total amount of money which is utilized and there will be some amount which is unutilized. So whatever is the utilized and unutilized amount of money, it needs to be properly disclosed in the balance sheet. The utilized money, they need to disclose in what form they have utilized and how much amount of money is left unutilized. So details about the previous issue regarding the money utilized and not utilized must be properly disclosed till all the amount of money from the previous uh, subscription or the previous issue has been completely utilized so until and unless if a certain amount of money is still kept unutilized it will be keep on appearing in the balance sheet so that is another rule or regulation of the prospectus they have to disclose the utilized an unutilized amount of money from the previous issue in the balance sheet till all the amount of money received from the previous issue has been completely utilized 
and in what way they have in, uh, utilized and what are the various manners in which they have utilized the money all details must be mentioned okay the next one is the name names and addresses of the underwriters and the amount underwritten means how many underwriters they have um, uh, assigned in this uh, a uh, new issue and what is the total amount of underwritten means whether they have uh, underwritten the entire amount of the issue or few percentage of the total length issue so that needs to be clearly uh, mentioned in the prospectus the next one is um, the protect uh, the prospector shall um, the consent of the trustee solicitor and advocates so first of all they have to get the consent of these people when they are going for an ipo so without the consent of the merchant bankers solicitors advocates involved trustees they cannot go for an ipo so they need to get the consent and this consent must be mentioned in the prospectus the next topic is the capital structure of the company how it is to be presented in the prospectus the first they have to mention the total authorized capital means the permission given by the sebi the total amount of money they are permitted to raise from the ipo way the next one is the total amount they have actually issued for example the authorized capital is around 50 crore but the company has decided to uh, issue only related to 25 crore means they do not want to use the entire authorized capital they want to use only 50% so they have uh, issued security worth rupees 25 crore but their authorized cap but they have the permission to issue securities worth rupees 50 crore that is the issued capital so first they have to mention the authorized capital then the issued then the subscribed capital means out of 25 crore uh, how many how much amount of uh, means how many number of shares have been authorized or subscribed for and also they need to mention the uh, they need to mention the total uh, we can say to means uh, the total out of 25 crore uh, for how much amount of money they how much amount of money the applicants have subscribed for and then they have to mention the paid up capital means uh, subscribed capital is different and paid up capital is different paid up capital means uh, how much amount of capital has been paid by the investors for example uh, i have purchased share worth rupees 100 but i have paid only around 50 rupees of the share so that 50 rupees is paid up capital the total amount of uh, equity Uh, which is paid by the investor so they have to mention their capital in the following manner first authorized then issued then subscribed and then comes paid up capital and then they have to mention the size of the present issue the total size what is the size of the issue what is the worth how many number of shares are to be issued what is the total amount of those shares to be issued so that needs to be mentioned and next one is the paid up capital of the ex company what is the paid up capital of the company the total capital that they have received from the previous issues that is to be mentioned after the issues what what kind of other formalities are there that needs to be mentioned and after conversion of convertible instrument means convertible instruments are certain instruments after a particular time period they will be converted into equity shares so these needs to be properly converted before issue then the share premium account if they are issuing shares on a premium basis they have to keep keep a share premium account also and also the details of the existing share capital of the company what is the existing share capital of the company how much extra they are uh, issuing in the ipo all these details must be mentioned in the prospectus so the prospectus must also contain the following elements related to the issue that what is the object what is the objective of the issue or uh, what means why they are issuing such kind of uh, or raising that amount of uh, finance then what is the basic purpose behind it uh, excess requirement of funds what is the funding plan how they are supposed to uh, use utilize those funds in the, in various projects and the summary of the project proposal on basis of which they have raised the finance how to what extent in what way they are going to implement those um, finance those funds that they have collected in the project and if there is some kind of interim use of fund means if they are not investing it in project they can use it in different ways all these details must be mentioned so it simply means that for what reason the company is going for a additional issue of funds 
for what reason the company requires additional funds all the details must be mentioned clearly in the prospectus okay so this is all about the regulations related to prospectus so this is the last topic of your second unit so as you all know that you don't have any case study you all have five units so this is the completion of the second unit in the next session i will start the third unit okay so that's it for today we will meet in the next session thank you